In this video, let's explore common fibroid drug or medical treatments available according to how they work, how effective they are, and which category of women are they most suitable for. Older women with severe symptoms, younger women trying to fall pregnant, or somewhere in between. These are frequently asked questions that many women are grappling with. So let's address them right now. First, a quick disclaimer. Remember, none of the information on this video should replace a discussion with your medical provider because their guidance is crucial in helping to determine the best course of action for your fibroids treatment. Think of this video as a tool that can help you learn about different options available and how they may be helpful and then use that to start or initiate a discussion with your doctor. We're going to use our own effectiveness ranking from one to five for each drug to classify their effectiveness in terms of dealing with fibroid symptoms or shrinking fibroids. However, please use this ranking loosely because we all respond a bit differently to certain medications. And some people may find a particular drug more effective than others. Finally, make sure you watch to the end because I've got a free gift for everyone who stays with me on this journey and I promise you won't regret it. Okay, let's look at the very first of eight groups of drugs we are analyzing today. These are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs with an effectiveness ranking of one out of five. Popular examples include ibuprofen, you may know that as Advil or Nurofen, naproxen or methanamic acid and so on. These drugs work by reducing the pain and swelling caused by inflammation. They're effective to some extent in relieving painful fibroids but not shrinking their size which is why they attract only a 1 out of 5 rank from me. Common side effects include stomach irritation, ulcers, or kidney problems. They're suitable for women with mild symptoms of pain and abnormal bleeding from their fibroids and who do not want to use hormones and would like to retain their fertility. The second drug in my fibroids treatment group is tranexamic acid, which I've given an effectiveness ranking of two out of five. You may know this as cyclocapron, Ivana, or Lystida. This drug is a type of protein that works by preventing your body from breaking down blood clots, which stops heavy fibroid bleeding. It is pretty effective for this purpose, but controlling the bleeding may be more challenging if there are several large fibroids, plus tranexamic acid has no effect on the size of the fibroids. Its side effects could include problems like nausea and diarrhea, and rarely they could increase the risk of having blood clots. Tranexamic acid is suitable for anyone with heavy menstrual bleeding from fibroids looking for non-hormonal treatment. Great, we're up to drug number three. And from here onwards, we enter the special realm of drugs known as hormones, or that work like hormones, promoting their activity or blocking them from working. So these drugs will work in different ways and can have different effects as you will see. Next, we have Arimidex with an effectiveness ranking of three out of five. This type of aromatase inhibitor works by preventing your body from making estrogen. It is used to treat some forms of hormone dependent breast cancer. As you can imagine, this drug will be quite effective at reducing fibroid size and of course related symptoms like pain and bleeding. The downside to these benefits come from side effects like bone loss, joint pain and hot flashes. Who can use this? Well, it's more suitable for women around or post menopause or for women who found other fibroid treatment options unsuitable. Group number four is progestogens or synthetic man-made progesterones, which have given an effectiveness rating of three out of five. Typical examples are the depo progesterone shot or injection, the progesterone coil, for example, Mirena, or the birth control mini pill that contains progesterone only. These drugs work by preventing ovulation thinning the lining of the womb and reducing fibroid growth to different extents. Bleeding can improve significantly in many cases. Some women will stop having periods altogether and some will experience shrinking of the fibroids. So they can be quite effective for dealing with those symptoms. Side effects can include mood changes, irregular bleeding and headaches. Some women could experience weight gain using some forms of the progestogen and they will be more suitable for a woman who has mild to moderate symptoms and who need some form of reversible short to long-term 
birth control depending on the option that she chooses. In the next group, number five, are the birth control pills, the combined birth control pills. These contain progesterone and estrogen. I've given them an effectiveness ranking of three out of five. There are several examples like microgynon, yaz, loestrin, and others. They also work by preventing ovulation and keeping hormone levels balanced or steady to reduce bleeding. So they could help to reduce the growth of fibroids and symptoms like heavy bleeding. Side effects though, irregular bleeding, headaches, an upset tummy, and an increased risk of developing blood clots. This is also suitable for women with mild to moderate symptoms who also need some form of short-term birth control. Group six includes drugs that work by blocking the effect of progesterone on fibroids. The more recent or one of the newer members of this particular group is called Unipristal Acetate or Esmaya and I've given this an effectiveness ranking of 4 out of 5. It is the same drug used in the morning after pill LA1 but at different doses. It is very effective at controlling bleeding and shrinking fibroids. Side effects include headache, breast tenderness, dizziness, and an upset stomach, and rarely it could have an effect on the liver function. It is suitable for women of childbearing age who want to preserve their fertility while controlling their fibroid symptoms until they're ready to have a baby. Our seventh group contains drugs that are very effective at shrinking fibroids and reducing symptoms symptoms have given them an effectiveness rating of 4 out of 5. These drugs are known as GnRH agonists and they work by stimulating the production of hormones in the brain that trigger the development of your sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. After they cause an initial surge, the levels drop but ultimately leads to consistently low levels of estrogen and progesterone. You might recognize them by the brand names Lupron or Prostap. However, this Despite being very effective, they do have troublesome side effects, for example, causing hot flashes, bone loss, and mood changes, amongst others. They are most suited for older women with severe symptoms who've had their kids already, or those who need their fibroids bulk shrinking before having surgery like myomectomy or one of the other surgical procedures. Okay, at number eight, we have GnRH antagonists. These drugs have been developed more recently and I've given them an effectiveness ranking of around four out of five. You might know them as Renugolix or Orelisa, and some are combined with birth control like Raiko. They work by directly blocking the hormones in the brain that trigger the development of sex hormones hormones that is estrogen and progesterone and so they can very very quickly lower the estrogen and progesterone levels that makes them effective at shrinking fibroids with quicker results and fewer side effects when you compare them to the GnRH agonists we talked about in group 7 but they could still cause some side effects like hot flashes and headaches. These drugs are most suitable for women with severe symptoms needing quick relief or those that need fibroid shrinkage before surgery. Rico, which merges the GnRH antagonist Renugolix with the combined pill further helps in reducing some of the undesirable side effects like hot flashes and bone thinning. We've just ranked eight of the common fibroid drugs treatments available. What did you think of my ranking? Hopefully this will help you understand the range of options available for fibroids drug treatments and which may best suit your needs. Remember though this is just a guide and other treatments might be available. Medicine is continuously evolving. Please have a conversation with your specialist, your doctor, to decide the best option for you. And if you watched all the way to this very point in the video, thank you. I really appreciate you. I promised you a free gift and here it is. If you want all the information in this video in a handy guide that you can quickly download from your phone or computer so you can refer to it at any point, use the link in the description box to download my fibroids drug treatment ranking. Let me know if you have any questions around the topic. Don't forget to like this video and please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you again pretty soon. Soon.